All right, good morning, everybody. Time to do it all over again and put all the pieces together. Welcome to Lesson 71. We're talking about fractions, decimals, and percents all together now. So the big thing to state is remember your fraction pieces. We have been on these and with these for about 40 lessons now, and you need to know this. It will make your life so much easier if you just have these facts committed to memory because these are three different numerical representations showing the same thing, how to show a piece less than one whole. You could write it either as the fraction one-half, as the decimal 0.5, or as the percent, 50%, or one-third, 0.3333333, that's what that little line on top means, it goes on forever, or 33 and a third percent, or one-fourth, or 25 hundredths, or 25%, or one-tenth, one-tenth, or 10%, one-fifth, two-tenths, or 20%, one-eighth, one hundred twenty-five thousandths, or twelve and a half percent. These are also, again, printed in your books at the beginning of Lesson 71, or use your fraction manipulatives. Sometimes the numbers are the same, but sometimes they're not. You're going to have to get them straightened out in your mind. So let's dive right in here, nothing we haven't seen before. If you put three one-tenth pieces together, what fraction do you have? So let's take a look at the fraction. I have one-tenth here, and one more tenth here, and one more tenth here. If the denominators are all the same, all we have to do is add the numerators, right? So three one-tenth pieces, the fraction would be three-tenths, correct? Not too tough and nothing we haven't seen before. How about if we put the three one-tenth pieces together, what percent do you have? So here's 10% plus another 10% plus the third 10%. Well, 10 plus 10 plus 10 that equals 30, right? And 30 what? Make sure to label it with your percent sign, 30%. How about if you put the three one-tenth pieces together, what decimal number do you have? Here is one-tenth. Here is another tenth. Here is another tenth. One-tenth plus another tenth plus another tenth. That's three-tenths, but do you remember how to write it as a decimal. you got to start with a zero. We're not going to say the and, and you need a three in the tenths place. That's how to say three tenths. How about this guy here? If you put three one-tenth pieces together, is it greater or less than a half? So you got a couple of different ways of going about it. You could grab your fraction pieces and just lay out three-tenths and just compare it to a half, in which case you would see that one-half is greater than three-tenths. Or remember that trick that we showed you involving cross-multiplication. If you didn't have access to your fraction pieces and you're fuzzy about it, you could just set it up as two fractions and cross multiply. Denominator of one fraction times the numerator of another fraction. 10 times 1, that's going to give us 10. And then I can go 2 times 3, that's going to give us 6. What's greater, 6 or 10? 10 is greater, so still 3 tenths is less than 1 half. How about here, just a reminder, to write a decimal as a fraction, something we've been working on all last week. Use the decimal name as the denominator. So 
This is 0.2, but how do you really pronounce it? That's a 2 in the tenths place, correct? So his real name is 2 tenths. So how do you write 2 tenths? We should know 2 as the numerator, 10 as the denominator. Or we'll try it again over here, 0 0.08. That's not really his real name, though. You have a 0 in the tenth spot and an 8 in the hundredth spot. So his real name is 8 hundredths. So 8 would be your numerator. 100 would be your denominator, correct? We worked on that all last week. Here's something we've also touched upon, but for some reason, sometimes it's trickier for kids. To write a percent as a fraction, write the number as the numerator over a denominator of 100, because that word right there, percent, C-E-N-T, cent, always means a hundred. You have a hundred cents in a dollar, right? Per cent just means out of a hundred. So two percent is two over a hundred. Fourteen percent, fourteen over a hundred. Ninety-nine percent, ninety-nine over a hundred. If you're changing a percent into a fraction, always give it a denominator of a hundred. All right, so now that we know all that, let's go ahead and try to use this for these examples here. Here it says write 23% as both a fraction and as a decimal. So we just got done talking about it. To change a percent into a fraction, the number itself is the numerator. That word percent, C-E-N-T, means out of a hundred. So go ahead and give it 100 for its denominator. If we're going to go and write it as a decimal, well, what does a fraction say? 23 hundredths. So written as a decimal, I don't have any holes in the no name. I'm not going to have to say the word and, and I'm going to write 23. So it ends up in the hundredths spot. 23 hundredths would be 2 tenths and 3 hundredths, right? Here they're going to ask us to write 3 percent as both a fraction and a decimal. Well, take that number 3. If it's a percent, it always has a denominator of 100. 3 percent is 3 out of 100. To write them as a decimal, I'll start off nothing in the no-name group. Put in your decimal point. Do I want my 3 right here? Well, that's the tenth spot. Here is the hundredth spot. So I'm going to put my 3 right here. What do you imagine I'm going to put here in the middle? A 0. 0 0.03. 3 hundredths. Here they're asking to name the shaded portion as both a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. So I have a row of 10 and I have 10 rows of 10. So there's a hundred total little blocks here. How many of these are shaded? Here's 10. Here's 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 out of 100. So let's do it up as a fraction first. 25 would be my numerator. That's how many that are shaded out of a total group of 100, correct? So my answer would be 25 hundredths. Let's go and write and then as a decimal. How do I write 25 hundredths as a decimal? I don't have a whole one shaded, so I'll start with a zero, and then two in the tenth spot, ending five in the hundredth spot, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. 
finally as a percent. So I'm going to take that number 25, and all I'm going to have to do is put a percent sign on the end of them, right? 25 out of 100. So we started doing this when we had the math investigations on fractions. There's the old story in math. You can't compare apples and oranges. If they give you a problem where some of the numbers are decimals and others are fractions, convert it so they're all either fractions or they're all decimals or they're all percents. So you could go either way here. I'm probably going to go and start over here. It really doesn't matter. One eighth is what decimal number? Do you know? Can you go back to your fraction pieces and find out? One eighth truly is 125 thousandths. So now it's pretty easy to compare. Here I have 125 thousandths. Here I have 125 thousandths. These two numbers are equal. So we got a little bit more work over here. One fourth plus another fourth. Well, that's going to give me two fourths. And hopefully you know that two fourths is really equal to a half, right? I don't think there's anybody in the room, especially if you have your fraction pieces out, knows that two fourths doesn't equal a half. So let's go ahead and get this guy set up as a fraction. 75 would be my numerator, and 100 would be my denominator, right? This would be one way of going about it. This guy here is a half. This guy here, is he more than a half or less than a half? Because I don't have hundredth pieces. Remember, way to do that is look at the denominator. What's half? of a hundred. That's 50. So then compare it to the numerator. Is this more than a half or less than a half? He is definitely more than a half. So one half would be less than 75 hundredths. Another way of going about this would be convert this side over here into decimals. You should know that one fourth is 25 hundredths, right? So here you have 25 hundredths. Over here you have another 25 hundredths. 25 hundredths plus 25 hundredths, that would give you 50 hundredths, right? And you could compare it out that way. 50 hundredths is still less than 75 hundredths. Doing it all over again, convert all to either fractions, decimals, or percents. Now, I kind of purposely put this one down over here for you because it is a little bit tricky. I want to bring your attention back over here. For one-third, the decimal equivalent is really 33 hundredths with a line on top. We keep mentioning it. That really means it's 0 0.33333333333 and it never stops repeating. So sometimes kids will get this problem and they'll say, oh, they're equal, Mr. Hines. Well, not really, because we said the decimal equivalent is 33 hundredths with a line on top of it, which really means it keeps repeating three goes on and on and on and on forever so let's check out the thousands spot there i have nothing in the thousand spot there i have a three what's greater nothing or three in this case 33 hundredths is less than a third. Let's try it out over here again. Get everything, either fractions or everything decimals, your choice. In which case, I think I'm going to go and convert these guys 
all two decimals. So that guy's 25 hundredths. This guy's 25 hundredths. So if you spell it out that way, 25 hundredths plus 25 hundredths compared to 25 hundredths plus 25 hundredths, you know that they are equal. So that is the end. You're probably going to want a scratch piece of paper. You're for sure going to want your fraction manipulatives out when you take the Socrative quiz. Good luck and...